What's that? You thirsty? No, I'm not thirsty. I just stole that from a king. Hey, welcome to the Summerbrook Takeaway Podcast. Great to have you with us. I'm Pastor Joey Rumble, joined with Tanner Treffin as he brought the word this past Sunday. Super excited uh, to have you with us and dive into it. Yeah, and man, it was intimidating to follow up Christmas Eve service. Come on, that oh, thing was that, awesome. What a home run. And we had over 800 people there at Christmas Eve, just excited about what God did there. Just, uh, man, what uh, impact that was, and, and just, uh, man, super pumped about yeah, it. And shout out to uh, the worship and tech team. You guys put on just an awesome service. Praise God, that was awesome. Yeah, they did an amazing job. It was great. Shout out to Dakota and the entire team. Yeah, and uh, so it was really cool uh, bringing the word yesterday two days ago, Sunday, <laughs> and uh, just having uh, Charles and Ellie and Austin and Austin and Hannah and August up there doing the skit with me. That was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for joining in. Yeah, so as we, we dove into the message, humility uh, before honor, and so uh, let, let's look at it and dive into it and uh, take some takeaways here. You share before destruction, haughtiness, before honor, humility. Yeah, the big thing there was that when I, when I look at the life of Jesus, he had um, just this humility about him that drew people towards him. He was able to hang out with the sinners, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, because he made people feel valuable and important. And, and you don't want to be around that person or be that person that just has this air of superiority, superiority where you make everyone feel less than. But a humble person values the other person. And, and God is um, for the, the humble person. So. That was huge. I remember years ago when I was a youth pastor, I was in this breakout session that Pastor... Uh, Jack Hayford was uh, speaking to all this, of us youth pastors. He actually went to be with the Lord this past year. What a, a, a servant of the Lord. But they asked him, one guy asked him, what was the biggest character trait that would make you effective in ministry? And he, he felt he shared it wasn't like one thing, but then he kept wrestling. He says, but if you push come to shove, you, if it was one thing that I would say, it would be humility. And I never forgot that. I, and so as you were talking about that, that came back uh, to mind. And so uh, I just, it's, it's huge for us to grow in the Lord, to remember and walk in humility. You also shared about humility. Authority problem equals humility problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God has instituted authority. Romans 13 shares that all authority is, is put in place by God. And so authority is a blessing and something good for us. And if we have a problem with that, it's really because we're prideful and we want to be in charge instead of doing it God's way. Yeah, and I love that verse, uh, you know, um, humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. That Man, let's lay our life before the Lord. Let's humble before, uh, hum uh, walk in humility before him. It's huge what he'll do in our lives. Yeah, and I, I shared about how pride can blind you. And I think one thing you do is just talk to some of your, your spouse or some of your closest friends, coworkers, and say, hey, do you feel more valued and heard when you're around me? Or, or do you feel less than? And th Ooh. that would be a scary question to ask. But Ooh. if you're brave enough, you could ask it. Oh, that is good. That is good. And then you shared, uh, clothe yourself with humility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you don't, you're walking around naked. And you're going to humiliate yourself. So it's a choice to choose every day to clothe yourself uh, with a humble spirit. That's huge. I, I love the, the mirror illustration where you, you had the mirror. And when someone compliments you, you reflect it back to the Lord. It's great. Everyone needs encouragement, you share. But, man, give God the praise. Uh, thank God for it. And I, um, that, that was a huge one for me that, that spoke to my heart. And then you shared pride makes you God's enemy. Humility makes you God's friend. Yeah, that, that verse is so huge. That's what really motivates me. That's from 1 Peter 5, uh, verse 5. But it's in other places. It's in James and, and throughout the Bible that God destroys and crushes and hates pride. It's, it's against God, but he supports, uplifts, helps, and the friend of those who are humble. And so I want to be in that position of humility, obedience to God, not feeling like I know everything, and following him instead of being his enemy for sure. So, so the world and everything else isn't about us. No, no. We need to retire as Public a CEO. service announcement. The world is not about you. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, let's retire as the CEO of the universe. And so um, it, what about that? You, I love the skit you did uh, with, uh, uh, of King David, and th that was really cool to uh, see that skit. And Any other takeaways on that as you're reflecting on it? If you, haven't, if you weren't in the 930 service, Little Ellie up there holding this with the, the king's spirit was just adorable. <laughs> um, but, but a big thing there was just uh, 
in two spots, in 1 Samuel 24 as well in 1 Samuel 26, you have these stories of where King Saul is coming after David, hating him, jealous of him, trying to kill him. And God supernaturally puts David in a position where Saul is defenseless and David has the opportunity to kill him. And his own men are encouraging him, God's giving you this opportunity to kill him. And David says, no, I will not attack the Lord's anointed. And it's just like such a strong captivating story if like God's really trying to show us that authority is put in place by him so don't go against authority as well as have the humility to trust me that I'm the judge that I'm going to take care of it that it's not your job to execute vengeance uh, against someone attacking you oh that's huge that's huge so such a good takeaway now you shared the illustration roses and that really spoke to me the uh, the r for uh, it stood out for reading which you said it would been teaching being teachable mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, toses and so but anything else on i know that spoke to me about making sure i'm more of a reader and being teachable in the new year yeah for some reason toses just didn't have the same draw as roses yeah, for yeah. me but uh but yeah reading um and having that teachable spirit is just huge um if it, i was thinking about like man how big is is our god like if you think you know everything and god has brought you all you need to know that that's such a small view of god but god has so much more for you so many things to call you into to teach you to grow you so continue to have that humble spirit where you can not only can learn from god but learn from others as oh, well it's huge and the o was for obedient and that you use the illustration of a if a, a terrorist was there would we choose to deny christ if it would save our lives and you would you know we'd all hope that we stood up and said no I, i'm going to serve the, i'm a christian i'm going to follow jesus but then you said well are you willing to die daily and be obedient to god in the small things that spoke to me because scripture apostle paul said i die daily and so uh, my biggest takeaway from the message was making sure that i'm obedient in the small things because scripture shares faithful and small you'll be faithful in much and so uh, that really spoke to me on the obedience side any other thoughts there on the o no, no, no other thoughts. Uh, I just think it's just whatever God's calling you to do. If, if you know that you're not being obedient in something right now, then a part of humility is saying yes to God right now. And if you don't, that's prideful. Yeah, that's huge. And then the S was uh, for being submissive. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about, uh, I really, uh, last year we only had one service for the, the, the holiday New Year uh, uh, day there and so this year the team i thought we should still do one service and everyone else on the team so no we need to do two and thank god i i listened because we were um we were packed out both services and so Praise we would there's no way we could have fit everyone in in one service so i, I was glad i i was uh listening to everyone else and didn't go with my way yeah that's good uh he was entrusting and um, that's such a big one of David and both Jesus and First Peter too. They entrust themselves to the one who judges justly. And just in all situations, in all relationships, your marriage, your kids' relationship, coworkers, we've all been hurt, attacked. Um, instead of making the other person feel like how you felt, you entrust God to be the judge. Yeah, and that part about we need to make sure in the new year that we entrust our lives to the Lord. And one of the greatest ways to do that is jump into 21 days of prayer. Uh, Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 will be one hour, and then on Saturday, uh, 8 to 9, uh, as we seek the Lord and, and pray and prayer and fasting. And don't let that word fasting intimidate you because it's all about what we want you to do in the fasting is increase the spiritual and decrease the secular in your life, and uh, whether it's food, media. And so God's going to continue to uh, lead us and guide us uh, with that, I'm believing uh, this 21 days of prayer will continue to lay the groundwork uh, to be close to the Lord. Amen. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, and then S was selfless. Uh, that humility is putting others first and putting God first, not putting yourself first. Um, so let's continue to walk in that. Yeah, and that spoke to me that, that you had shared about reading through the whole Bible in a year, being selfless, being filled up spiritually. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything uh, there on reading the Bible in a year? Yeah, I, I love the, the different Bible plans of reading through the Bible in a year because uh, it just, it, 
it's, it tells you what day, what to read, so it's real easy, plug and play. And then if you are, get caught up, you get busy, you can read it while you're driving, you can play it where it uh, reads it to you, so it's just nice. Yeah, that's great. So what what's your biggest takeaway from your message? Mine was the, the mirror illustration, uh, to live a life worthy of the calling God's given me, and just when I get praise, to reflect it back to the one who who deserves it. That's huge. And, and I, I shared mine, to be obedient in the small things. I believe that we're going to have an amazing 2024 as we walk in humility before the Lord and uh, growing in Christ. So this Sunday coming up, multiply. You don't want to miss as we're in this series in First and Second Samuel. There's a verse we're going to look at this Sunday that's been on my heart for years that I can't wait to dive into it. I believe it's going to help impact our 2024 individually as families and as a church body as a whole. So Summerbrook Church, what's your takeaway? Uh, have a great day.